kind of really want to stop my video by saying what up witches because I got this really cute little what up witches pin badge from the London dungeon I'm a little bit obsessed with it and I just think it's really cute and I love pin badges I'm such a nerd but I'm not gonna start it that way because I'm a sensible grown-up person kinda Today we are going to be doing something fun and doing kind of nice, light, fun, silly little, actually not that silly, but light and fun video where we talk about books, obviously one of my favourite things. I'm going to be recommending you and kind of doing very, very brief reviews of a couple of books I've enjoyed recently. They're not going to be like too serious of books or anything like that. They're not like big, heavy textbooks or anything. Most of them are fiction, but I just thought it would make a nice, short, fun little video today. The first book I want to recommend is 13 by Steve Kavanagh. It's a crime thriller in the Eddie Flynn series, but by no means do you need to have read any of the others to get this story. It is very good as a kind of standalone little law slash crime story. It isn't the most believable in terms of plot. Um, it's very kind of <laughs> out there. It's very sort of exaggerated. Basically, it follows this serial killer who is just like an absolute genius mastermind and he plans everything with precision and everything always goes right for him. Basically, he's not the kind of criminal you would get in real life, um, at least not very often, but it definitely makes for a fun little read. So he is this serial killer who goes about killing all these people and he actually frames other people for the murder, so he never gets caught. Up until this story, law enforcement don't realise they're even looking for a serial killer because all the methods of killing are so different, they're all in different places, there's nothing to link the victims, and there has been conviction for every single crime. So Eddie Flynn is our hero of this story, he's a lawyer who used to be a bit, bit dodgy himself, a bit of a con man in his past. He's quite a cool little character, very smart, very cool, very clever, not afraid to get his hands dirty, you know. He's left defending a famous client who has been framed for the murder of his wife and bodyguard. Turns out the serial killer did it and is framing our movie star here and Eddie has to prove this guy's innocence but in a massive twist the actual serial killer is on the jury he's wormed his way into the jury and is influencing the trial from the inside don't want to give too much away but like I say not the most believable book but very fun very exciting it's pretty much everything you want in a crime slash law thriller and if you can suspend a little bit of disbelief very entertaining and it just grips you throughout. The next book I want to recommend is a little bit more of a sad one but it's called 99 Red Balloons by Elizabeth Carpenter and I, I was going to show you all these books but my sister visited this weekend and I gave them all to her to take home and read so I don't have any with me but it's called 99 Red Balloons by Elizabeth Carpenter and it tells the story of a little girl who has been kidnapped and gone missing and part of the story is told from the girl's perspective, part of it is told uh, from the perspective of the family left behind. It's told in parallel with the story of a little girl who went missing about 30 years before as well. It is very sad in places, it's very emotional in places, but it's very, very good. The characters are all kind of very believable and you do get very invested in them. And oh, there was one character who died in it who wasn't even a main character, but I cried and I was like, oh. It's a nice little book for having very deep characters that you get very invested in and you do see them develop over the plot, which is nice. They're not just these static characters. You obviously, you get very, very invested in what happened to both little girls who went missing. Like I say, a little bit emotional at times, but very good. It kind of works both as a family drama and a thriller, so if you're into either of those genres, definitely recommend it. And not to give spoilers, but I did like the ending, so there's that. Another book I want to re recommend is a really kind of different one and it's called Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds and this one I just picked up completely on a whim from a second-hand bookshop for literally a pound. I didn't really expect to think much of it because it's kind of like a young adult book but it's written through a series of poems and I was actually completely blown away by this book. It, it really like hit me emotionally. It tells the story of this boy who Oh, I can't remember now if he's living in New York or London, but basically it's a big city. There's a lot of gang crime in the area, and actually I think it is New York because it revolves around guns. And his older brother has just been shot, and he goes and gets his brother's old gun, and he's like, I'm gonna go and kill the guy who shot my brother. But as he gets into the lift of his building, he's kind of hit by a series of visitations from the ghosts of all the people in his life, who have been victims 
of gun crime. Yeah, it's, I don't want to give too much away, but this was such a little emotional roller coaster for me. It ends on a bit of a cliffhanger. It really, really makes you think about how gun crimes and gang crimes affect everyone and how it really is a damaging cycle of one person hurts a person who then hurts another person who hurts another person and how so many innocent people get mixed up in it and um, yeah I was I was kind of blown away by this book and like I say it is aimed at a younger audience but that doesn't take anything away from it it's still just as powerful and emotional you know the whole idea of like gun control and gang crimes and stuff like that is not something I've ever been personally affected by thankfully it's not something I deal with day to day. Like the closest I've come is when I had to phone the police um, because there was a knife fight at my local park when I was there with Kyra on lunchtime. That was horrific and scary and I wasn't even personally involved. I was just like stood at the side of the park shaking holding on to Kyra while these guys fought with a knife. So like I say like this is something I've never really thought about, I've never been personally affected by, but reading this book really kind of hit me hard and yeah it's a good one. <laughs> Thoroughly recommend it. Another short recommendation is for a biography by Lauren Graham uh, which is called Talking as fast as I can from Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls. Lauren Graham obviously plays the wonderful Lorelei in Gilmore Girls which is one of my favourite TV shows ever. This is her biography talking a lot about how she got started on Gilmore Girls, uh, what she did before then when she was a student and getting into acting, uh, talks about her other roles in between then and then obviously coming back to Gilmore Girls for a year in the life and yeah I just I love this. I love Lauren Graham anyway, I love Gilmore Girls. This book is written in such a kind of nice funny light-hearted way. She's a wonderfully smart witty woman and I really do look up to her actually and I think it was amazing. I wanted to read this book for a long time and I'm thoroughly glad I did. If you are into biographies, I recommend it. If you're into Gilmore Girls, I recommend it. If you just want to read a funny, light-hearted book, I recommend it. And very, very quickly to finish this off, my final recommendations come in the form of some comics slash graphic novels. Uh, basically a whole series of them actually. As you might know from some of my other videos, I've been working my way through the New 52 DC comics, uh, basically like right from the start all the way forward, reading all the comics that I wouldn't normally pick up and as I'm kind of further into it now I'm not reading as many of the ones that I wasn't enjoying in the first few issues so it might be controversial but I dropped like the Green Lantern comics and stuff like that because he's never been a character I really enjoyed um, and a few others like that but I've recently been reading the whole series around Trinity War and Forever Evil. Oh hi Baba, Kyra's here, she says hi. Hi! You hear her grunting? Now I've recently been reading all the comics around uh, Trinity War and Forever Evil and I've got to say they are absolutely fantastic. It's a massive huge story arc with some standalone series as like Forever Evil, Forever Evil Arkham War, uh, Forever Evil Rogue's Rebellion and so on, but also taking over issues in the big series as like Justice League, Justice League of America, Justice League Dark and so on. Forever Evil itself happens when a portal is opened from another world and the kind of evil version of the Justice League come through to our world. So you have Ultraman instead of Superman, you have uh, Superwoman instead of Wonder Woman, you have Owlman instead of Batman and so on and they basically come to our world as the crime syndicate and the whole Justice League is in peril and the criminals rise up and it's just I don't kind of, again, I don't want to give too much away, but it's a very, very fun, intense, interesting story arc. You get to see some amazing aspects of your favourite characters and also like the darker counterparts of them as well. I do find some of the parts go on a little bit too long because it is a very big, long series and I'm not finished with it yet, so I can't make any comments on the conclusion. In between kind of Trinity War and Forever Evil, you get this story of like the Justice League Dark and John Constantine uh, Phantom Stranger, Pandora, Nightmare Nurse, fighting um, basically like the epitome of evil in Blight. It was a good story but again it went on a little bit too long for me and Constantine had an amazing character arc that was just undone at the end and that was a little bit of a disappointment for me but that small section aside, everything around it has been fantastic so far. The issues of Forever Evil Arkham War are what I'm reading at the minute and they are so, so good so far. You get to see so many amazing like DC villains like Killer Croc, Scarecrow, Penguin, Bane, it, oh it's just, it's so good. 
Poison Ivy as well has quite a role. It's just, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. And like I say, there's some highs, there's some lows, but overall, definitely worth a read if you like DC basically. But yeah, there we go. So they were just some short, very quick recommendations from me and what I've been reading recently. If you have any book recommendations from me, then let me know down in the comments below. If you want to shout out in my next video, let me know who is your favourite DC hero or villain and why. Let me know what you thought of any of these books, if you've read them yourself as well. But for now, thank you so much for watching today. I appreciate you guys so, so much and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching today, an extra special thank you goes to Gambit and his show for Deshaun, Mark Darner, Christian Berg, Rachel B. Royer, Jaden Shepard, Jaylee Moore, Religionist BS, Sir Michael Moore, Tater Thoughts, Greg Ladd and Pixelated Skeptic. And to everyone who has supported me on Patreon this month, a huge, huge thank you and hugs and love goes out to you guys, you guys are amazing. Also worth mentioning, if you like this video, you should subscribe because that would be really cool. I have merch available if you wanna go check it out, I absolutely love it. And I also host a science podcast, which you can check out called The Here and How. That's me done, I'm gonna stop talking. Thanks a lot guys.